Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Well today was the first day of Hasbro PulseCon 2022 and our first panel right out the gate was Transformers and we had a lot of great stuff shown to us today. So first off Legacy isn't ending it's just kind of getting a new suffix so now it's going to be Legacy Evolution so we got a cool new logo to go along with that and they showed us pretty much the entire first wave for this new line. We didn't hear anything on leader class. We got core class, we got deluxes, we got voyagers. I don't know if it's just because nothing's ready to show us yet, or the first wave might just be kind of refreshes from the last line. We'll have to see, nothing's really been told to us about that yet. Uh, but we'll go ahead and jump into it here. So first off, we have core class. Uh, the very first thing we were shown was some Dinobots. We got Dinobot Slug. And I think he looks pretty cool. I will say that I feel like the torso is a little hollow in the Triceratops mode. The robot mode, I think, looks pretty decent. Uh, you know, he comes with a nice little gun there, and I think overall he looks pretty great. Head sculpt and everything looks pretty good. So, happy with him. Uh, the next core class Dinobot we got shown was Sludge. And I have to admit, this one kind of hurt me a little bit, because Sludge is my favorite Dinobot, and he just looks weird. He's got these massive back legs in Dino mode, which I don't love the look of, but I can kind of deal with it. I assumed they were going to transform into arms or something. But then we get a look at the robot mode, and those legs are just hanging off the side. And I just couldn't understand why they did that. The answer was made clear very soon. But it, just that robot mode really suffers from having those legs just hang off the side like that. But then they quickly followed it up with that all of the core class Dinobots are going to be a combiner. So we're going to get Volcanicus. Uh, very much like we did in Power of the Primes. And so they showed us uh, Slug and Sludge transformed together to kind of form the torso of the larger combined robot. And it looks okay, we'll see how it goes, but I think some of these individual robot and uh, dinosaur modes are gonna suffer a little bit because they have to be combiners. Kind of, again, what happened to us in Power of the Prime. So I would have rather just had normal, clean-looking core-class Dinobots but they're trying something new and we'll see how it goes. I have to tell myself that I still have the Studio Series Dinobots and those are pretty much perfect. So for the perfect clean versions of the Dinobots, I have those already, so I have to keep that in mind. So we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping as we go along, they look a little bit better. Like I said, Slug looked okay. Sludge, those legs just hanging off in robot mode. Even if they could have done something to maybe put them on the back, make them into wings or something, would have helped a little bit, but I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Right now, I kind of like one, don't really care for the second, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. So last up for Core Class in this first wave, we have Sound Blaster. Now this is obviously just a repaint of the original Kingdom Core Class Sound Wave, which was an absolutely fantastic figure, so I'm definitely okay with getting a repaint. A lot of us right away were questioning why the cassette window was purple instead of red, because the original toy had it red, and they quickly clarified that this was because the original Headmaster anime had him with a purple cassette window as opposed to the toy being red, so they wanted to be more faithful to the Japanese anime where he shows up. So I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, at first I was, you know, very much questioning why it wasn't red, but I understand their explanation, and I went, I had to go back and look it up because it's been a while since I've seen Headmasters, and they're 100% correct. He definitely has the purple cassette window in that anime, so makes total sense. Uh, he does transform, of course, and he does come with a little buzzsaw. So basically what they did is they just took the laser beak from the Kingdom Soundwave release and they just painted it yellow to be buzzsaw. This does not transform just like laser beak didn't back in Kingdom, but it is neat that they included buzzsaw, so now you'll have one of each, which is actually kind of cool. So this guy looks good. Like I said, it's a simple repaint, but it was a great mold to begin with, so I'll definitely be adding this one to the collection. All right, so moving on to deluxes now. First up, of course, we have Breakdown. Our last Stunticon is finally here. Very happy to finally finish out the Stunticons. He is kind of a retool slash remold of Wild Rider, which kind of makes sense. They are the two legs for Menasaur, so it kind of makes sense that their molds would be similar. A lot of people were complaining he doesn't look more like a Lambo. I get it. It's okay for me personally. I've seen pictures of it side by side with the Combiner Wars Breakdown. And I think it really does look much better than that, so I'm happy with it. He does come with a spoiler accessory. Uh, we had seen some pictures leaked previously where he didn't have the spoiler, but he did have those two peg holes on the back, and there is a spoiler accessory that can go ahead and peg in there, so that makes the car mode look good. I think the paint scheme and everything looks really good. The robot mode, I think, looks fantastic. Very animation accurate, so I'm happy with that. And you can see he does have, like, the spoiler that he can use as kind of like a bladed weapon. It comes with another little piece that it pegs into, and he can kind of hold it to look like kind of like a giant sword. So I think he looks great. 
very happy to finally have our last Stunticon here so we can finish up Menasaur, and I'm very happy to finally get him done. All right, so up next for Deluxes, we have Scrap Hook, which is an all-new character. He's definitely a Junkion, but not really a Junkion we've ever seen before. He's got kind of like a giant crane arm. Uh, this is because he transforms into a tow truck. Uh, definitely like a Mad Max-style tow truck, though. I will say like the basic shape of the truck reminds me a lot of Energon Rodimus, which I think looks really cool. Uh, but yeah, he, he's a kind of our weaponizer for this year. So they did say that he is going to be able to transform without completely taking him apart and putting him back together. It's not like parts forming. He will have kind of a fluid transformation, but he does have the ability to come apart into different pieces. They're calling it Evo Fusion. That's kind of like their tagline for this whole evolution uh, subline or second wave, whatever you want to call it, of Legacy. Uh, so you'll see that on a lot of the packages. So this guy, they kind of showed on the packaging him coming apart and then combining with, spoilers, Hotshot, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but it's really neat. So I think it's cool that if you don't want to use the weaponizer gimmick, you don't have to. He will have kind of a fluid transformation. Uh, but if you want to, it's there. And so you can kind of take him apart, mix the weapons around and all that. So I think he looks really cool. I'm excited for this guy. I'm not a huge fan of the weaponizers. And by that, I mean... I don't utilize them all that much. I don't really, I'm just not creative enough to take these guys apart and make up all kinds of crazy combinations. I've seen the people online who can and kudos to them because they come up with some great stuff. But I kind of just like transforming back and forth. So I have that option if I want it. But if I want to go crazy, you can take this guy apart and make all kinds of cool armor and stuff like that, which is really neat. All right, so up next is the previously mentioned Hotshot. We had Armada Starscream in the previous wave. Now we're getting hot shots, so Armada is definitely seeing some love, which is really, really cool. This guy looks fantastic. It's fun to just have a hot shot that actually has shoulders that you can move front to back, because if you remember the original toy, he could really just kind of swing them out to the side. Uh, he doesn't come with Jolt, which is kind of a bummer, but maybe there'll be some kind of release of him a little bit later down the line. But he does have that kind of engine block on the front that can become a weapon, just like the original toy. Uh, the vehicle mode, I think, looks fantastic very reminiscent of the original toy it's a very unique uh vehicle design so i think they really nailed that and recreated that here so that's really fun uh switching back to the robot mode he does have the ability still to uh, have the visor swing down over his eyes uh, and on the back of the packaging his evo fusion he actually still has that bazooka in the back that kind of rear axle of the car can swing over his head and rotate and so he still has that ability to kind of have that giant bazooka it's not triggered by a minicon anymore but that functionality is still there so i think this guy looks phenomenal uh we haven't had a hot shot in quite some time i think the last one was part of that universe line they did i want to say 2008 2009 and uh that one wasn't the best but this one looks great so i, I am missing jolt a little bit but otherwise i think this guy's gonna be a lot of fun all right, and last up for the deluxes here, we have Needle Nose, which is our final Decepticon Junior Target Master, which is really cool. I'm glad they didn't like leave that spot open. We're finally getting the third one for this trilogy here. Uh, he looks great in robot mode. He does come with two Target Master partners. Now, they're very much kind of in the style of the one that came with Point Blank. They're not like the Battle Masters we saw back in Siege. These are very G1-esque, where they don't have a lot of articulation on their own. Uh, but they still look good, and I'm happy they're able to provide both of them. Uh, if you remember, Spinister didn't actually come with any Target Masters on his own. He just had those cannons that clipped onto his arms, and so it's nice to actually get full-on Target Masters here, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and he has a basic jet mode. It's not really that exciting, but again, very G1 accurate to the original toy, so I think it looks really cool there. And also, the two Target Masters have the ability to attach to the back of the jet mode, I'm not really sure what this is about. They kind of they kind of briefly hinted at it while they were doing the presentation and said they would get back to it and then they kind of didn't. But it was in like the product shots on Hasbro Pulse. So they can combine on the back. I don't know if it's a special functionality or not, but they can do that. So uh, Needle Nose looks pretty great. Like I said, very happy to finish off the Decepticon Junior Target Masters. Really want to get back to the Autobot Target Masters, but you know, we'll get there eventually, I assume. All right, so now moving on to Voyagers. Our first Voyager is Leo Prime, or Lyo Convoy, if you prefer the Japanese name. He looks really great. Uh, this Lion Mode, I think, looks really fun. And he's got this kind of Evo Fusion thing where he's got pieces that can kind of flip out of the main, 
little cannons, and I guess that's kind of his gimmick. It almost reminds me of like one of the trigger bots or trigger cons from G1. He's got these guns that kind of flip out of the main. Uh, when you get him into robot mode, he can kind of use those as like guns in his hands. He's got the lion legs, which can kind of hang off his forearms and have claws flip out which I don't love the look of that necessarily because I just feel like it's too much kibble hanging off of his arms. But in the proper robot mode transformation, you can kind of tuck those back so that he's got normal arms and you don't have to have all that kibble hanging off the front if you don't want it. So it's kind of like an optional attack mode, which I do appreciate because I kind of like the more kind of clean, less kibble look. I'll probably just keep him in the normal robot mode most of the time. But this is great. This is a nice affordable version of Lyo Convoy, Leo Prime. Uh, you know, previously we kind of had like the Masterpiece, which was really expensive, or the original Japanese toy, which nowadays can be expensive as well. So this is a really nice looking version of this character at what I believe is going to be a pretty affordable price. So very happy to add this guy to the collection. And then last up for Voyagers and last up for Legacy Evolution, we have Tarn. Now this is a guy that I'm not super familiar with because I didn't really catch up on all the IDW comics, but this guy's been a fan favorite for a while. I know he's been highly requested and it looks like they've done a great job with him. He looks really, really cool. Robot mode looks great. He's got those giant twin cannons that you can kind of have as like a dual barrel blaster on the one hand. Or if you want, you can actually take those two cannons and put them together to kind of form like a giant rifle. I think that's a really cool look as well. I like having all that options for his artillery. Uh, you have, of course, the tank mode, which looks absolutely fantastic. They just really did a great job with this guy. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with him. I wasn't super familiar with Jaxus either, but I love that figure. That came out great, and I have no doubt that Tarn's going to turn out really great as well. So very happy that he's finally getting into the line for a lot of people that have been asking for him for a while. And just looks like they knocked him out of the park. And then last thing to touch on with Legacy Evolution before we move on, they gave us the kind of giant picture, mural, spine art, whatever you want to call it. I'm assuming this large picture is going to be cut in half, like for Autobots and Decepticons, just like with Legacy, because it's a rather large picture and I don't really see it fitting all on the side of one box. But it looks fantastic. Now there is some stuff on here we've already talked about. You can see Hotshot, you can see Leo Convoy or Leo Prime, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but there is some stuff on here if we kind of really scrutinize uh, some stuff we haven't seen. Up in the upper right corner, you can see the Nemesis and a Quintesson ship. So I don't know if that's a tease. We did get a Titan class arc previously. Maybe we're going to get a Titan class Nemesis. That'd be cool. I'd take a transforming Nemesis ship. That would be really fun. Uh, right underneath the Tarn head, we do see the Insecticons. Of course, we have Kickback already, but we still need Bombshell and Shrapnel. We see a bunch of Junkions here in the front. Now, I'm sure one of them is going to be Scrap Hook. But there's obviously going to be some other ones. I'm assuming the Junkions as a whole will kind of be the weaponizers. So there'll be one or two or three different ones throughout this line. Uh, but they'll all kind of be Junkions, it looks like. Uh, you can kind of see Lockdown creeping over there in the kind of bottom left. So obviously we're going to see Animated Lockdown, which I think could be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, finally bringing some Animated into this uh, Legacy line. Uh, let's see, Dinobots, Needle Nose, we've seen all that before. Uh, we do see uh, Crosscut, which is just kind of a silver repaint of Skids. Uh, and then up in the upper left is Breakdown. So there is kind of like one of those warp gates like far in the back. So I don't know what that means. A lot of cool teases. But the big one, all the way at the top, Armada Optimus Prime. Now, like I said, we've had some Armada love previously. Starscream, Hotshot, Optimus most assuredly going to be a leader class so maybe he's not in the first wave maybe he's just not ready to show yet i would imagine he'd probably be commander class he does have a large trailer that he transforms with very similar to motormaster so it would not surprise me if uh, armada prime is going to be our commander class for the year maybe in wave two kind of like we saw with motormaster so that's a possibility but this is a really great picture there's a lot of stuff to see here and a lot of cool teases I'm really excited for this. I think Evolution is going to be fantastic. I am really, really pumped. Everything I've seen so far, I absolutely love, with the exception of those core class Dinobots. I don't hate them. I'm just not as excited for them. Everything else looks fantastic. The Deluxes, the Voyagers, I'm very excited. I want to see what's coming for Leader Class, and I really, really want to see, I'm assuming, a Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime. I really hope there's no auto-transforming gimmick. I wasn't the hugest fan of that. I appreciated it at the time because it was kind of like revolutionary technology to have it automatically transform based on how the cab is transformed. But I think over time, it kind of lost its effectiveness. So I'm kind of hoping for just a clean transformation here. 
but an updated, really poseable Armada Optimus Prime, especially in the super mode, would really be amazing because that super mode did not have a lot of articulation from the waist down. So would be really, really great to get a really nice, fully transformable and fully articulated Armada Optimus Prime. So Transformers Legacy Evolution was the bulk of the presentation for toys. They kind of went into some other stuff for the brand, but at the very end of the presentation, they gave us one last little thing. So we did get Transformers Shattered Glass Soundwave, which is one I think we've all been clamoring for for quite some time. This looks phenomenal. They were able to use the Netflix Soundwave mold, which I know a lot of people have been trying to get a hold of for a long time. That thing goes for crazy prices on the aftermarket at this point. So they were able to use that Netflix Soundwave mold. The shattered glass colors look fantastic. He does have his headband. It is molded in. They talked about kind of how they wanted to handle that. They didn't know if they wanted to do like a soft piece of PVC plastic, but then you'd kind of have to unplug it for the transformation and then plug it back in. And they didn't really like that idea. So they did mold it in. It's kind of a shorter bandana, but it is present. Uh, but he looks fantastic. He does come with Laserbeak and Ravage in their Shattered Glass color schemes, which also look really, really good. Of course, he transforms into the cassette deck, uh, again, using the Netflix mold, which is really, really great. Uh, so this is going to be a PulseCon exclusive. I'm sorry, a Hasbro Pulse exclusive, just the website. Uh, I don't think it's a shared exclusive with anyone else because all the Shattered Glass have been just Hasbro Pulse exclusives. It'll come with the variant cover of the, I think it's issue number five for Shattered Glass 2. So it's a little pricey. This one, I will say, uh, not standard prices for a Voyager. I think this one was $63, which is a lot, but it's a Voyager with the two cassettes, which are kind of like a core class as well. So it's like a Voyager plus a core class plus the comic plus $10. I'll be honest with you, it looks phenomenal but it is a little bit on the pricey side. But I feel like all of the Shattered Glass releases have been a little more than you would expect with just kind of totaling their retail prices. Um, so it is a little bit more than you'd expect, but I think it's gonna be worth it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. All right, so that's gonna do it for Transformers Hasbro PulseCon 2022. Uh, let me know what you guys are most excited about. I wanna hear from you in the comments below, so please let me know. I think for me personally, I'm really excited for Needle Nose because I wanna finish off the Decepticon Target Master Juniors. I'm very excited for Shattered Glass Soundwave. I think he looks fantastic. Uh, Hotshot looks fantastic. There's a lot of good stuff. I'm Breakdown, of course, I wanna finish off Menasaur, so of course I'm excited for Breakdown. It all looks really great. So let me know what you are most excited for in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.